So this is the implementation video on calculating the absorption of lead to an alumina solid phase. The equations we're going to use in this implementation are spelled out in the class notes, and we actually spent a fair amount of time on Wednesday going through those calculations. So uh, let's begin with the implementation. Uh, the first thing to recognize is that we're modeling alumina as a diprotic um, weak acid, and it has two pKa's. pK1 is 6, pK2 is 7.7. .7. Notice I've pasted those pKa's into cells B4 and B5. Again, we're using the same trick of setting all the other K's to large values. So this takes our hexaprotic acid system and treats it as a simple diprotic system. Uh, second thing to recognize is that the lead absorption is modeled in terms of the uh, complexation of lead by the XO minus, or the fully dissociated form. And so that means we're using alpha-2 in our calculations. And if you look at alpha-2, you'll notice it's very small under acidic conditions. That makes sense. It's the basic form of the uh, alumina. Um, and then it becomes uh, 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 increasing as you get to intermediate pHs, as you, inc as you get to the pK, pH equal to the pKa of the of the first and second dissociations. And then finally, it's, it's essentially one at under very alkaline conditions. Okay, so that's, that's nothing new. So we recognize that we're going to use alpha-2 to calculate the XO minus uh, species. And what I've done is just simply uh, created a second column here. Column L is, is the same thing as column F. Now, column M is the actual concentration of the um, fully dissociated solid phase. Whoop. And, uh, and so that's going to be equal to, we'll click on that to show you, the total aluminum concentration times the fraction that's dissociated. Okay, so again, no surprise there. Um, so XO minus starts at a very low concentration, and then it rapidly approaches a value which is equal to the total concentration as you get to more alkaline conditions. Okay, so we needed to know the XO concentration, XO minus concentration, to do the next phase of the calculation. The next phase was to calculate the fraction of lead that's absorbed compared to the total amount of lead in the system. And I'm going to refer you to the algebra that we did in class, but let's recognize that that ratio, the numerator is the amount of lead absorbed, and the denominator is all of the forms of lead. So let's see what I've got here. In the numerator, I've got M13. M13 is the XO concentration times L$9. L$9 is the equilibrium constant for lead binding with XO. Now, you might expect to see a lead term in here if you were just simply reorganizing the equilibria. But remember, the lead cancels in all of the terms in the numerator and the denominator. So my numerator is just M13, L$9, and the next row it'll be L$10, etc. Okay, and that's all divided by 1. Okay, so that represents the free lead concentration. O$9 is my lead hydroxide species divided by the H+. Plus. And I was getting a little fancy here. I actually included a lead dihydroxy species. We didn't do that in the algebra in class, but you can see I've just taken the second hydrolysis constant and divided it by H plus squared. And then finally, M13L9 is right back to our lead alumina binding. Okay, so numerator is lead alumina, denominator is lead, lead hydroxide, and uh, lead bound to alumina. So as you might expect, um, that alpha starts at a very small value because the alumina is highly protonated or fully protonated under acidic conditions. But notice that this changes uh, pretty quickly as we move out of uh, very acidic conditions into intermediate uh, pH values. And so lead is expected to be mostly bound to the solid phase 
once we get above a pH of 5. So the other thing you might want to consider, if, if this is the alpha or the fraction that's bound, what's the fraction that's not bound? Well, we don't have to do any calculation. We know the fraction that's bound. The fraction that's unbound is just simply 1 minus the fraction that's bound. So that, that one turns out to be easy. And then finally, um, the lead in the water. Well, the lead in the water is equal to the total lead, and I arbitrarily picked a number of 10 nanomolar, 1 times 10 to the minus 8. And alpha sol, or alpha in solution, is um, the fraction in solution. So I take the total lead here, uh, 10 to the minus 8, and I multiply it by the fraction that's in solution. And that gives me the amount of lead that would essentially pass through my column. And so if you put 10 to the minus 8 moles per liter of lead through a column at pH 0, it goes all the way through. But you'll notice that this 10 to the minus 8 gets pretty small as you um, increase the pH. So there's the implementation. Let's look at the results. And I've got a plot now. Um, the pink line is the fraction of lead that's absorbed onto the surface. And it uses the left axis. So my fraction is very low until I get to about four and a half, and then it rapidly increases. We call this the absorption edge. Um, and then it levels out at a, at a value of one. So this turns out, this, this plot says that above a pH of six, alumina is a very good solid phase for the absorption of lead. And then the green line is the concentration of lead that would get through the cartridge. And at low pH, you put in 10 to the minus 8, you get out 10 to the minus 8. The alumina doesn't do anything. It doesn't bind the lead. But it, at this absorption edge, the lead concentration goes down very steeply. And then above a pH of 6, the lead concentration is, is really quite low. Well, one of the reasons we do spreadsheets is we can what if and... Uh, cell L10 is the alumina concentration. Look what happens if I use 10 times less alumina. So I'll put my cursor where that point is crossing. I'll decrease the alumina concentration tenfold, and boom, the absorption edge moves to higher pH. Less alumina, you need to make the reaction more favorable by um, increasing the pH. And if you wanted to make this work at lower pH, well, you'd add a lot more aluminum. So now I'm going to do 10 to the minus 2 instead of 10 to the minus 4. Again, put my cursor here, click, and now the absorption edge is, is down around pH 5. Of course, as you start to fill up the sites on the resin bed, um, this absorption edge is going to shift its way toward higher pHs, and that is often... Uh, coincident with a phenomenon we call breakthrough, which is when the column is no longer capable of retaining lead, and lead breaks through the column and goes into your drinking water system. And that is my implementation on absorption.